Hi everybody, Dan Ullman here reminding you the DRX Breeders' Cup package is all your handicapping essentials for racing's championship event. It includes DRF all-access PPs, clocker reports, betting strategies, and lots more. Get your package today at shop.drf.com. Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, living the good life here in San Diego. or at beautiful Del Mar. We're on the infield beach area getting set for Breeders' Cup. Does it get any better than this? Handicapping with your best friend in a beautiful setting, usually around this time of the year, you're freezing your tushy at Aqua. You set me up for a takedown there. I'm not going to go for it, Dan. It is. It's really, really nice to be here. I, I feel, are, are we all right, like slouched in these chairs? Uh, how, how do you think, how do you think this comes across on I camera? I think it's coming across as two fellas handicapping yeah. in comfort, which where is what we're your swim trunks? Don't, don't, your swim trunks. Don't worry about it. Race right. number four is the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint. We're going seven eighths of a mile and we're kicking off Breeders' Cup Saturday with this grade one race. Taking a look at the field, ways and means the number nine is likely going to be the favorite in here. A three-year-old filly that's just been super in her last three starts, draws a comfortable outside post position and has the stalking speed to work out a good trip. Turning back to shorter races did the trick for her this year, Dan. She's, she's really good. Um, I, I can't knock anything she's done since Chad Brown decided to concentrate on sprints with this filly. This, however, is going to be the toughest test of day for her. I completely agree. Also from a pace standpoint, she's been chasing kind of moderate paces, yeah. at least in her last race. We throw up the time form US pace projector. She's gonna be chasing a quick one in the early stages and her name is Society, very lightly campaigned this year by design for Steve Asmussen. Two starts, two seven-eighths of a mile races, and she went gate to wire last time in the ballerina. Yeah, I mean, she's, she's a very, very fast horse. It was interesting to see them, you know, do a little bit of pace tracking early in the ballerina day before she just took over. That was a pretty soft pace that day. She can go faster if she has to. I, I get that they like to sort of be a, a little bit uh, laid back with their early in our races now, but they got to go to the lead here, don't they? Oh, I think they're going right to the front with society and hope to take advantage of her brilliant natural speed. Let's start things off with the number one, Frost at Dawn. She's only raced twice previously on turf. That was in Dubai way back in the end of 2023, early 2024. And she didn't do really very much running in either one of those races. She was second once, but she was in against a horse, Manama Gold, who came over here, I believe, for Todd Fletcher and really never panned not, out. Not a bad horse, Manama Gold. And she was certainly good at that time, just sort of dominating the uh, three-year-old Philly set over there um, in Dubai. I guess the first dirt race was okay. The second one was not good at all going a mile. They're gonna switch surfaces here. She looks like a long shot. Didn't break well in her lone turf start in North America. That was the Frank Franklin stakes last time. She did make up some late ground, but yeah. if she breaks poorly against this group, and a lot of European horses often have trouble getting out of the gate here in North America, she could be really behind the eight ball, and she has a lot of work to do against this field. The two is one magic filly, and she is all upside. Let's watch her most recent start. This is the Chillingworth stakes, and she ran hard from start to finish. She pushed a very good filly named Sweet Azteca, who was thinking, of, they were thinking of running here, she would have been one of the favorites. This was supposed to be her crowning moment. Yeah. It didn't work out. It was an unseasonably hot day at Santa Anita. Sweet Aztec reportedly didn't like the heat, and she didn't like the heat one magic Philly put on her early. Yeah, that, that's very true. It's fair to wonder, um, you know, what that race is going to look like through the stretch had the big favorite not just totally given way at the top of the stretch. That, that left one magic Philly sort of in control of that race. It was a perfectly good performance then. She's very lightly raced. She earned a very solid figure winning two starts back. She just blew out an allowance field that day. I still feel like even with the 98 showing, she's got to improve to beat this field. Right after that allowance win, I was checking some of the workouts on XBTV, and I noticed that Phil D'Amato had one magic filly in company with Stronghold leading up to the yeah. Pennsylvania Derby. And I thought she got the better of that horse. And that horse is pretty good, obviously. Yeah, ran second good. in the, in the uh, Pennsylvania Derby. And then she came back and did this. Again, she's all upside. Pleasant is the number three. Let's watch Pleasant's one and only start this year. To me, she's the most fascinating entrant in this race. This is her first start in about 395 days. She sits off a reasonable pace, and then she puts the boots to the field. She's a head away from being a perfect four for four. Yeah, all three of her races last year were really, really good, including the defeat where she lost to a pretty good horse after what I thought was a pretty tough trip. Then she, she was really impressive last year. Obviously, something went wrong there. She missed a lot of time. This return from the layoff, I don't know what more Baffert could have wanted. She sat right up close. Love the way she finished this race off through the final furlong. Plenty left in the tank there very ambitiously spotted now by Baffert to runner in the Breeders' Cup Judo Philly Mare Sprint. It's got me very interested. I, I think it's a great sign that he's going to make her stakes debut in yeah. the Breeders' Cup off of only one race 
off a year layoff. I think Bob likes this horse a lot and why not? She's a beautifully bred uh, Judmont product. And yep. again, she looks really good in her races visually. Vava is the number four and talk about seven furlong specialists. That's Vava to a T. Five of six wins have come at this distance. Last time out in the ballerina, she sort of underperformed a little bit, although speed was playing very well that day, I thought. Vava, Cherie DeVoe thinks, doesn't run her best at Saratoga. I think okay. she's 0 for 3 there. So maybe that's a little bit of an excuse because you take that race out of the equation. Boy, she's been good, and she handled society when that was coming off the layoff in the Chicago. Yeah, it just feels like that she was the leading Philly mare sprinter in the country right up until that Bell Arena, Dad. And then, you know, she sort of stubbed her toe a little bit there. That pace wasn't particularly fast. They decided to sort of sit back off it. And then uh, I read Ortiz, who was riding that day and who was back on uh, back aboard on Saturday, just had to come up the inside through the stretch there. She had to look at it. She couldn't quite get there at the end. It certainly wasn't her best performance. I'm not sure how much I want to hold it against her. I think she rebounds on Saturday and runs it. A, a much better race. And if she runs her good race, she's a handful. Again. While Vav is a seven furlong specialist, the number five Pandora's Gift is a synthetic specialist. All four of her wins have come on the all weather. She's raced twice in North America. Pretty good effort when second in the Presque Isle Downs yeah. Masters against a good synthetic turf sprinter in Roses for Deborah. Last time out in the Franklin, she ran okay to be third. She's solid on turf and synth. Dirt is a completely different story against some of the best Philly and Mare sprinters in the world. Yeah, I mean, exactly, Dad. I mean, you feel like, you know, the turf and the synthetic is probably her surface, and yet when they, you know, ran her in the turf stakes race last time, she's 40 to 1. Now they're going to switch surfaces against some really, really good dirt horses. You don't know how she's going to handle it. Huge price if you like her. So this will be Society's third run in the Breeders' Cup. She tried the distaff and didn't stay that distance in 2022. Finished fourth in this race last year. Again, only two starts this year. A third off the layoff behind Vav in the Chicago. And then this race, the Ballerina, where she popped a 102 buyer speed figure, got right up close to the pace. She prompted the eight to one shot that ended up finishing last, and she kept right on going. So it was a solid performance for affiliates. Always had talent. Always had talent. She's run several fast races. Races. Obviously, when things go her way, she's really, really good. Personally, then, I just think things really went her way in the ballerina. You mentioned uh, the horse that she was tracking. Let's let, just let an overmatched horse cut the pace in there, sat off her, could have taken her whenever she wanted, and she did. And then she had her two main rivals, Scylla and Vava, who are both back in here. She just had them on the chase to the final quarter mile. They couldn't get her. I thought she took advantage last time. That doesn't mean she's not good enough to win right back. I'll wait and see what kind of price she is. She's trained by Steve Asmussen, as is her next door neighbor in the starting gate, the number seven Zeitlos. And while society likes to run from on the lead, Zeitlos likes to kick it in late, as she did in this race. The Thoroughbred Club of America at Keeneland. A lot of folks thought that Speed was doing very well in this race. Yeah. Zeitlos got a really nice ride from Jose Ortiz, who altered course to the inside and picked them up late. It's a really good performance. You're right. It seemed like Speed was very effective that day. It also felt like the rail was a good place to be. So maybe just being able to stay in through the stretch and then rally up the rail, maybe that helped Zeitlos a little bit. Either way, I still thought it was a good performance. She shows up every single time, Dan, eight for 14 in her career on dirt. Um, does she have to run a better race than that to beat this field? She absolutely does. But don't be surprised if they go after society early a little bit in this race and set this thing up. That's what Asmussen is hoping for, at least in the as it pertains to Zeitlitz, yeah. who has won seven of her last eight on dirt. Soul of an Angel is up next. And after Soul of an Angel won the Ruffian going a one-turn mile earlier this year, beating a pretty good horse in Randomized. It was coming off the layoff. Mm. Randomized, of course, was last year, second in last year's Breeders' Scott Distep. Safi Joseph had a feeling maybe she was a one-turn horse. But she ended up running pretty well in the Molly Pitcher against Idiomatic, really I would did. say, taking the champion all the way down to the wire that they decided to give her one more try. And she was a well-beaten third in the personal ensign. So Safi cut her back, figuring the path to the Breeders' Cup for her wasn't going to be the distaff. Instead, it's the Philly and Mare sprint. Here she is in the Princess Rooney, rallying from off the pace to score. She likes one turn. Seven eighths shouldn't be a problem. Does she get the setup? Yeah, I don't know if she's going to get enough of a setup, especially against horses like this, Dan, because I don't I don't know that her best race, the, the idiomatic race uh, notwithstanding, I don't know if her best race really gets it done in here. I didn't love that she was just so far outrun yeah. early in that most recent start. That's not going to work here. Um, we'll see if she can keep it a little closer. If nothing else, she's been really good for Safi, man. Only five starts for him, but all of them are good. Here's Ways and Means, the favorite, scoring last time out in the gallant bloom. Chad Brown had her in here. She was two to five, but she was chasing a pretty promising runner in Nick's style. Yep. The pace just wasn't very fast. Ways and Means took over at the 316s, went about her business. Chad said it was the perfect prep, and he thought, actually, in some ways, it was the best he'd ever seen her on the track. 
I mean, she looked really good winning that race. It obviously wasn't against the kind of field she's going to be meeting on Saturday, but she looked really good winning that race. Two starts back, they ran her in the in the grade one test going this distance. She looked really good winning that race. Prior to that, they just ran her in an allowance race that she couldn't possibly lose going the mile at Saratoga. She looked really good in that race. I mean, she's just a really talented horse, and she has been since day one. But again, she's a short price in here against a way tougher field. Completing the field is the number 10, Silla, who is a multiple graded stakes winner going two turns. But Bill Mott told me uh, a couple of weeks ago he thought his gut feeling was that she'd be better around one turn as sort of a stalking sprinter. In the ballerina last time out, I thought she sat a pretty good trip. She came with a run. But talking to Bill, he said he was really aggressive with her. He sent her out to California for the Clement Hirsch. She was second around two turns against the very good Adair Manor. And then Bill wheeled her back uncharacteristically in three weeks for the ballerina. She ran really well. No surprise Bill's bringing her in fresh here. Yeah, it's an interesting point that he makes there too, Christian. You go back to the Hirsch, uh, two starts back going long. That was one of those situations where she was up close, a, a race that was really fast early and then really slow late. I think maybe she was feeling the effects of that. They came back in the ballerina last time. Listen, it wasn't a terrible performance. And again, I still sort of feel like that was the kind of race where society had all the best of it and Scylla having to sit behind that horse and chase. It probably just didn't really work out. She can get a better trip this time. But Mott's probably right that she's best around one turn. She's a, she's a very dangerous horse in here. Let's take a look at our top selections for the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint. Ways and Means, I think we agree, is the horse to beat. Society is the horse to catch. We'll yeah. try to best both of them with some horses that might offer a little value. I'm happy to try to beat society um, and maybe not quite as happy to try to beat ways and means in here, but I'm going to bet against both of these horses that I didn't think either one of them had to win in here. Um, I feel like Z uh, Vava deserves to deserves recognition, deserves a chance to rebound in here because she's been so good throughout her career. I'm not, I'm not against her, but I want to try somebody else. I'm very taken by what Pleasant has done so far. Very taken by the fact that backward enters are here. I'm going to bet her in this race. Still is very interesting to me at the seven eighths of a mile distance. I like this outside post for her. I think Mike Smith's going to try to tuck in behind ways and means, follow her entering the turn and see if the cover's live and maybe she can yeah. tip out and make a bid for the great Bill Mott. Not sure I'm getting the 10 to one on the morning line on Scylla, but I think she'll be a decent price nonetheless. It's the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint, the first Breeders' Cup race on Championship Saturday. Best of luck. Hey, let me give you a hot tip. If you liked the contents that you've seen before, click on the like and subscribe button right here. And of course, for more DRF videos like Race of the Days, Stakes Previews, click on the videos right here.